Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to Tabletop Republic. Tom here in store, and we are going to start painting the Blackhawk team from Blood Bowl Second Season Edition. And we're going to do that using this guy here as our example, Varag Gulchua himself, the star player. Now this model, um, the detail on it is incredible. Um, it was fiddly to put together, as you might imagine. The higher the detail, the higher the likelihood that there are some challenges, but the instructions are there to help. Um, so what we're going to do with this is we're going to paint this in a very specific way. It's a really, really good speed painting technique. Um, it's good if you um, have, for instance, vision problems as well. And also it's a little bit of a cheat. So um, yeah, the, the, the first thing we're going to do is uh, spray prime this guy with the Wraithbone um, spray from Citadel. And we'll be back when that is done. Okay, so there we go. The man himself is now primed. He's no longer camouflaged into the background of my cutting mat here. Um, okay, so now it's time to unleash our secret weapon that we are going to use in painting this team. As I said before, this is a great technique to use um, for speed painting purposes. It's a great technique to use if you do have a little bit of you know eyesight issues um, when dealing with uh, such detailed models, um, you know, or just if if the, the the you find the detail on some of these guys baffling, and it helps to really differentiate between um, different components, different details in the miniature, and that is a pre shade. So, in order to do this. I am going to now grab your Agrax Earthshade. Um, so usually what you do, you prime a miniature, you paint on the colours, and then you wash. And Today what we're going to do basically is just do that the other way around. We're going to wash the miniature before we add our colours, and that gives a, a wonderful roadmap as well. It just really helps you pick out the, the details. Um, to do this, I'm going to grab just a decent sized brush. I'm using here an um, Army Painter uh, Wargamer Monster Brush. Give the pot a shake as usual, and then I'm just going to start putting this on the entire model. All you want to do is just ensure that you're not uh, pooling it too much in any one area, because that can that can uh, have real problems when it dries. It might dry too thick, you know, and you might gain a bit of an unsightly mess where you don't want it, okay? So, I'm gonna do that across the whole model. I won't make you sit here and watch me do that because that's a very straightforward step. Um, as you can see though, we're already bringing out the details. When it comes to larger flat surfaces, so I'll just uh, show you on the chest plate here as well. Just make sure that what we don't do is we have too to, to large a pool on the flat area. So just manipulate it with your brush. Um, it's important that when you're using this sort of pre-shade technique that we're not just um, slapping it on and then leaving it to, to dry where it may. You do have to manage it a little bit just to make sure that you don't have a problem to deal with after. Okay, so I'll finish up that step and we'll be right back. Okay, so there he is all washed up with the Agrax Earthshade now and as you can see what we've done is we have now really really defined all the details which is what a wash does of course but we've just done it before we've applied any paint so we've given ourselves a really sort of easy to follow visual guide map of the miniature and all the details on it um, right here under the glove I want to show you this I purposefully left it I sort of realized too late anyway so we'll call it a happy accident but this is what can happen as I said before if you let it pull um, you get this kind of ugly mess underneath now thankfully for us on this occasion it's in a not very visible area so I'm not gonna lose any sleep on it now um, the uh, the top painters out there, and there are plenty of them on YouTube, so if you want to find out how to paint things to a really, really almost you know showcase quality standard, then do look around. There's some really talented people doing some really 
hard work in uh, bringing you know high quality stuff to you but we're, we're sort of painting to it to a, a, a quick almost tabletop standard quality here so what I'm about to say may you know horrify some of the more uh, high quality and more talented painters to their very core but the thing about this pre-shade is um, and you can really you can do it with anything you can do it with a sepia you can do it with black you can do it with a flesh tone even depending on what you're painting um, it's a little bit of a cheat and the secret cheat that I occasionally treat myself to in the in the interests of speed painting things to tabletop is anything you now can't be bothered with or don't want to paint again is technically done so what we've done is we've taken a bone colour and we've washed it with a sort of dark brown so maybe the horns maybe the teeth maybe if you're doing the any cloth parts in just a sort of you know, a parchment colour, if you will. Um, you can sort of just leave them now. They're done. Um, it works really well if you've done a, a brown primer and you've um, and you've washed it then, because then any leather straps... Leather straps are like my pet peeve on miniatures. So um, I have done a, a goblin team in which I actually primed them with army painter brown, washed them, and then I was like, cool, anything leather, I'm not even looking at it again. But, um, as I said... I won't quite be doing it, uh, uh, you know, that half-hearted uh, on this occasion. We are going to touch those bits up. And the other thing to note is, of course, um, what we've done here is we've really darkened this model down. So any colours that we now apply over the top of what was before just Wraithbone, um, they're going to be darkened down. We're going to be using predominantly contrast paints for this model because, again, it's a speed painting job. It's a pre-shading job. And the sort of Insta highlights that uh, contrast paints can give you are going to be a good tool for us to use here but i don't want them on the raised areas to be that dark and you know albeit it's an orc orcs get dirty they get a bit more grimy but still i do want the colors to pop a bit so what i'm going to do is i'm now going to um pre-highlight i'm going to take the uh wraith bone from the pot i'm going to take a, a standard dry brush here this is the army painter hobby dry brush and what I'm going to do is I am just going to give it a quick dry brush treatment over the raised areas again. So if you've never dry brushed before, you get your paint, you work most of it off onto a paper towel so that your brush is almost dry. And then you start hitting the raised areas. Now obviously I don't want to go into the recesses here because I just don't appreciate that would defeat the whole object. And albeit the contrast paints will sort of shade areas again for us when we go over them, but this is just going to make sure that it isn't too dark. Sorry about that, hit the camera there. Um, isn't too dark, isn't too grimy, and isn't too dull on the on the colours when we apply them later, okay? So again, I won't make you watch me do that whole thing, but I'm gonna do that across the whole model and I'll be back when I finish that step. Okay, so there we have it. He has been re-highlighted, but what we haven't done is we haven't lost that roadmap. We haven't lost that pre-shade. So we are still good to go with the contrast paints and we can confidently apply them without worrying that they're going to come out too dull. So you don't have to do that step. If you really want to get this sort of cracked out and on the table, fine. Um, if, if you want a darker looking orc, a messier looking orc, then, you know, by all means, don't re-highlight. Um, but as I said, I want to make sure that my colours come out as vibrant as we can, given that we are sort of cheating here after all. All right, so the two brushes I'm going to use here, uh, just army painter brushes, uh, the highlighting and the precise detail one, just two different sized uh, tips really. Um, so yeah, just grab yourself whatever you feel comfortable using for the application of this contrast paint. Now, as always with contrast paint, you want to be as careful as you can. The idea behind this stuff is that you can correct mistakes afterwards, but it's best to minimize them where possible. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, um, sorry, didn't show the pot, here you go. I'm going to start with Orc Flesh, 
on, surprise, surprise, the flesh parts. And they are nice and easy for me to determine thanks to the pre-shade we've done. So um, if you look at this model, uh, always, you know, have, have a quick look, especially with detailed models, just have a look around it so you kind of understand what's going on in different areas. And as we can see, underneath the armor, he's actually um, just bare chested and straight away I've made a mistake there and gone onto the leather strap, but let's not worry too much about that. Typical, isn't it? For the purposes of a YouTube tutorial, and I'm saying, yeah, be careful with your contrast paints. And then I immediately make a mistake. But that's why we have the Wraith Bone in the pot. We can just go over that before we do the next step and correct it then. So I'm not going to go back and correct that. Uh, that mistake there where I hit the strap. Could do with a larger brush here. This is why I have also two different sized brushes to hand. Not a bad policy, because you can just switch out and start applying a greater volume of paint when you need it. And of course, the great thing about the contrast paint is that it also flows into the recesses. So it will join where we've got the Agrax there and will give a greater highlight where needed. A greater shadow rather in the deeper recesses so again I will not make you watch me paint all the green parts I'll be back when that part is done okay so green parts done but let's talk about mistakes uh, because i've made about 400 on this model already um one thing i forgot to mention is uh when you're uh, painting any miniature no matter what your technique you're using it's it's best to start from inside to out and what we mean by that is take what is you would imagine is technically the lowest part of the model and in this case it's the skin um, start with that because if you imagine if I'd started with the armor plates or the leather straps on this thing there's a there's a hundred places where I've hit the hit the other surface and I'd have to sort of correct a, a mistake that would be a lot more difficult to do than just to paint over wraith bone because that is why we have wraith bone in the pot so I'm just gonna touch up the areas where I've hit you can see here on the inside of the armor there I hit the green it's happened in several places so I'll just snip those in the bud now, get those covered before I start the next layer. Okay, welcome back everyone. So the green is now done. Um, I have corrected most of the mistakes that I found. Um, and that shows you the uh, importance of starting from the inside out on the model. Because if you imagine I've started with the armor panels or the leather straps or something, then gone to hit all that green, um, yeah, I would have wrecked the paint job already. So I also, um, off camera, went inside the mouth and did a Fire Slayer flesh for the kind of gums, and I hit the tongue with uh, Majos purple. Um, didn't want to show you that on camera because that was just a quick part. And also, yes, I basically had to do reconstructive dentistry on all his teeth after doing that with the wraith bone again that's going to be a reoccurring theme so um i will be touching up mistakes as they happen i won't show you all of them okay so what i've decided to do with these guys is i am going to pay homage to a uh, an old orc blood bowl team of mine which i got rid of quite a long time ago now in which all the sort of cloth uh, uniform parts were in blue and the armor panels were all this kind of bright orange look pretty cool so i'm going to do that so i'm going to start with the uh, trousers here and i'm going to do them with talisar blue i want a nice bright blue because as i said the pre-shade has kind of lent us to a situation where the brighter colors the better really okay okay right so let's go on with the blue on these trousers then if you notice any parts that i haven't um corrected yet from the from the green don't worry i'll get them eventually i'm also going over with a reckless abandon 
all these kind of stitch areas. I could go around them and leave them in the wraith bone colour. That's an example of, as I said before, an area you might just want to leave and call done by all means, but for the purpose of making the blue section as efficient as possible. I'm just going over them and I'll fix them later. One thing to note about this kind of technique using contrast paints or glazes and that kind of thing is that once you start you need to finish because if you go halfway over an armor panel or a large surface area like the the cloth here um, if you step away from it don't finish it and come back to it on an area where you haven't uh, finished the whole section then you are gonna come across it like a streak that's really really difficult to actually clean up after the fact so once you start keep going until you have finished this team I have to say I'm really looking forward to playing with because I do prefer a kind of a hybrid team usually so I don't go complete bash I don't go complete agile I like uh, the undead team for example the humans necromantic you know teams with r real flexibility in them so this is potentially um, a little trickier to use than I'm used to in terms of a team because you know logically speaking I should probably just use lizard men the skinks are quicker um, of course with the black hawk team you get the option to throw a teammate but that is such a lottery that you can't bank on it um, but, you know, this Black Hawk team does have some skills that the Lizardmen team don't. They have a, a new skill which helps negate um, the threat of uh, the both down result, which your Lizardmen Saurus don't have. So they're going to be a little more efficient on the bash to start with. One second, there's the fan. Okay, so there's the blue done. Um, again, I'll be fixing up mistakes in due course, which, as we all know, is professional speak for when I sort of get round to it. And the next colour I'm going to use is Griff Hound Orange, and I'm going to start building up the um, armour plates. Sorry about the phone. We are still live in store you know so uh, you will hear people walking past and the phone going off but and this is the first painting tutorial that i'm doing for youtube as well so i'm sure there will be little bits to iron out in my methods Yep, that looks good. Not too darkened by the pre-shade that we've done. And this flat back armour panel is a prime candidate for what I was saying earlier in once you start with this technique, you need to just keep going because if I left that, walked away and came back to it, that streak there would just be horrendous, so do not get caught out by that. All right. Okay, so I will finish off this orange and be back. Okay, so orange armor plates are done. Hopefully you can see these guys now really starting to come together. Next I am going to paint the ghoul that is sort of still 
writhing pinned to his shoulder and I'm going to use Griff Charger Grey for the flesh tone on that to give him a kind of pallid, ghoulish look. Again, as you can see, the pre-shade does a job here. Not only is it the roadmap that I kind of described it to be before, but it gives you the chance to stop at the boundaries with greater ease. So not only is it visually helpful, but it allows your brush control. Ironic, I know, that I've already in this video had to correct so many mistakes but that's that's going to happen it's kind of unavoidable but aside from that with the pre-shade in place you can almost kind of stop at the faintest millimeter before the the actual edge of whatever detail it might be that you're painting and you still have an effect that is a neat and tidy finish and that's really what I'm I'm looking for here you know I already made the disclaimer at the start of this video this is a speed painting technique this is for ease of painting if you're not so much a speed painter but more of a dear god why isn't it already on the table painter this kind of technique is probably for you if you're an airbrush aficionado and your abilities are way beyond mine and you swirl brandy glasses and guffaw at the thought of dry brushing um, then this video is probably not applicable to yourself but as I said there are so many talented painters here on YouTube that you can look up that will teach you techniques beyond my capabilities but for some of you I know this kind of thing is is the way forward so I'm just gonna finish him up again off camera and I will be back when he is done okay so the goal is done for the most part um, but I think at this stage you grasp the concept of how contrast paints work so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish off the rest of these bits off camera um, but I'll show you what colours I'm using. So we've got things like the, the skull, uh, any bone parts, like the tusks, for example, leather straps, and um, and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the colours I'll be using to do that. So we've got a skeleton horde, agros dunes, gore grunter fur, and wildwood um, just all brownie tones that i will be using to do a, a mixture of things because he's an orc and you know they kind of construct their uniforms or rather probably get goblins to do it for them out of uh, whatever they've got lying around it's not necessarily the case that every leather strap will be the same color so i'm just going to sort of mix and match the bone obviously the um the skeleton horde i will use exclusively for the skull and you know any uh, other parts of bone uh, the tusks and the horn on the shoulder, for example, there. But the rest I'll just mix up. And I will be back when they are all done. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, that is basically all of our contrast paint work done. Okay, so uh, not only did I finish up the um, leather parts, as described before, but I went ahead and used... Black Templar here on the boots, and Ian Den Yellow on uh, just a spot on the eyes and the helmet plume. Okay, so uh, one thing to note, you will see I now have a painting handle. This is the first tutorial I'm doing for YouTube, so um, one of the things I realised quite quickly was that my giant fat hands were in the shot quite a lot, so 
I got them out of the way for you with a painting handle. Um, so really, we're almost there in terms of blocking out the uh, primer and what, what needs to be done to get us to basically a, a, a finished um, piece if, if you're, you're happy to just get it on the table. So what we need to do now, there's three sort of disparate components. Well, I say three colours that I'm going to use. One is anything that is going to be metal. And for that, I'm going to use either lead belcher or retributor armour. Now, you may see uh, some other guides uh, paint black first and then use the metallics over the black. I'm not going to bother because, quite frankly, that's what null oil is for. Uh, we'll shade them with that after we've um, painted them. The other thing that needs touching up, which I'm going to do, sorry, with a little bit here of a bad and black, is any stitching. So there's some stitching um, on the trousers. There's some stitching that sort of holds the ghoul in place and um, here on the little tag that's on his helmet. So there's bits and pieces that I'm going to cover with that and then sort of do a grey highlight afterwards. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to use to do that with. So I will basically get those done because you don't need to see me apply paint with a brush. You are familiar with that concept. I'll get those done off camera and then we'll be back to basically finish the model. Okie dokie, welcome back everyone. So the stage that we've got to is um, that every part of the primer now has been blocked out by our chosen colours. We've done our contrast paints, we've done our metallics, and as I said, I dropped a bit of uh, Abaddon Black in there, uh, just over the little stitchy parts and that kind of thing. So, what we need to do now is uh, we're going to have a little bit of a tidy up, and we're going to uh, shade the metallics. And to do that, we're going to use our good old friend, Null Noil. So, basically, what we will do is two things. One, of course, you probably don't need to be shown how to wash a block piece of detail, but we will go around all the metal parts and wash them with the null oil. And secondly, what we're going to do is we're just going to hit any part that you think might need darkening down a bit in the shade. So maybe these little cracks here in the armour, or any section, just any section between two components that you think could deal with being a little darker on the shade, okay? Here at the side of the ghoul's arm, just to help differentiate them between the two components a bit more. So, it's a fairly straightforward step. You don't want to overdo it because you'll just drive yourself mad. There's a reason why we've used contrast paints, okay? They shade themselves for the most part. But there will be one or two areas that could just do with a little more sort of separation between two areas, okay? So anything you feel you need to do that on, do that as well as, as I said, shading all the metallic parts we've just painted in. Okay, so I'll do that. I'll be back when it's done. Okay, so there we are. We are now at the point where all the metallics have been washed and certain areas that just needed a little more help in the shade have been darkened down to sort of separate the two components, wherever that might be. I just did here and there as well in these little... Um, these little uh, sort of puck marks in the armour. Don't go over the top on that. Remember, we did a pre-shade and we've used contrast paints. So most of the work has been done for us on that part. I really didn't take long on that at all. And I didn't go over the top on that. You know, spare your sanity. So this might actually be the part where some of you clock out. You're done. That's tabletop ready for you. Um, I hope that it wasn't too uh, of a painful method and you're happy with the result, but 
we want to go a little bit further and not much i'm going to hit you with a quite a few paints that i'm going to use now and it's going to make it sound like uh, i'm going to go over the top on sort of edge highlighting and stuff not the not the case at all but let me let me tell you what we're going to do now we are going to just hit the top sort of edges of of every part here and there with a little bit more highlight because i really want this guy to look as, as best as he can for what what we're still classifying as a speed paint job okay um so every surface on this model we're now going to do a little bit of a highlight of and i'm going to just whiz past all the colors so you can see what it is i'm going to be using all right so for the skin the green skin we're going to highlight with scar snick green for the yellow on the plumage and whatnot uh, we'll use flash kits the yellow for the orange armor fire dragon bright for the gold sections, uh, Liberator Gold. Don't worry about the sort of separation in there. The painting side is shaken and it's just fine. For the silver parts, we'll use Rune Fang Steel. For the dark brown leather parts that I've used, I'll highlight with Scrag Brown. For any light parts that you might have seen, for instance, his gloves, uh, Tau Light Ochre. For the trousers, We'll highlight with Lothurn Blue. For the black stitching and whatnot, we use a little Eshin Grey. For the Ghoul, Ulfa One Grey. For any bone parts, teeth and nails, just a little bit of our good friend Wraithbone again. And literally, the top dots on the on the teeth and, and, the, and the nails, there, there might be a little bit and, a, and a, you know, a single dot in each eye of Korax white, okay? So, I will commence with this process, but given that it's a very straightforward concept, again, it's the kind of thing that you won't need to watch me do repeatedly. I will show you quickly on the armour, and then I'm sure you will grasp the concept. Again, I'm not going to go around every edge this isn't an edge highlighting job that I'm going to you know, lose my mind doing absolutely every section of. I'm just going to do this here and there. Do not overdo this whatsoever. That's not the point of this method, okay? So let's, for example, take some of these edges of the, of the armor. I'm just going to drag that up there. Bring those parts up a little bit, and that's that. That's as much as I'm doing, okay? As you can see, I'm not going to take too long on it. I'm certainly not going to hit every armor panel. Just a few bits here and there. Okay, oh, I've got the goal there, don't worry about that, I will fix him. I shall fix his shoulder. Alright. So, I'm going to do that on every colour with the paints that I've just shown you there, okay? And when it comes to... When it comes to the metallics, I'll just show you here. It's the same sort of method, but it, you're, it, it doesn't need to blend anywhere near as much when it comes to metallics because it can just look worn and chipped. So, for example, a bit heavy on that contact there, but, you know, there we go, that's a bit better. You know, the, the actual lines from the bristles are good scratch marks on metal. Okay, so I'll just be doing that. Sorry, I realised that wasn't in focus there. Just like that, okay? Just brush it over there chain mail there. But that's what I'm going to do on every colour on the model, alright? And I'll be back when I finish that step. Okay, so there we are at the stage now where I've had a little highlight to every area. You don't have to do that step, of course. I know I promised you a speed painting tutorial and I'm asking you to do edge highlighting. Believe me though, it did not take long. It wasn't a, you know, proper blending job. It wasn't an edge highlight around literally every single edge on the model. I just took the paint, 
and added a little extra highlight where I sort of subjectively felt that it should go, really. But it has, you know, brought the level of the miniature up just slightly. Um, one thing I'll note on this guy, I actually um, accidentally just highlighted all the bone sections and the teeth and uh, fingernails with um, with Corax white rather than Wraith bone. So they're, they pop a little bit more than they should on this. Um, but, you know, I decided to leave it because it's done now. So, almost there. Um, if you do want to skip that step, the one thing I would advise is still do the metal, okay? So just go around the, the metal areas and give them the little highlight that they need just to bring them up a bit. But next, we are going to use a little Rhinox hide. And we're going to start to weather this model just to give it that little bit extra, okay? So all I'm doing is I've worked into the, the bristles of, again, I've got the, the Army Painter dry brush back out. I don't want to overdo this. What all I'm going to do is select a few areas where I'm going to stipple on some weathering like so. Okay. Again, I don't, I really don't want to overdo this. I'll just select a few areas of the armor panels where that might be appropriate to go. Okay. That's that. Lovely. All right. So I'll just let that dry for a moment. It won't take long because all we've done is stipple on a little bit. And then We will turn again to our good friend, Lead Belcher. The reason why we don't want to overdo this is because this is this kind of step that you can easily turn into. Well, I ruined that model. So don't do that. And if you are a little bit unsure about this step, then obviously just don't do it. But I'm going to. Now follow up those areas that I've done with the Rhinox hide with a little bit of the lead belcher and that is going to give it a kind of worn chipped impact effect. Okay. And that'll do. As I said, I don't want to do that over every armor panel. Everywhere. It's just to give the indication of you know, one paint. Choose a good edge. Like this. Armor paint here. Alright, now. Just to drive that home. I'm going to turn again to my precise detail brush and the rune fan steel once more and you might be able to tell where this is going all i'm going to do is do a few spots within that to convince ourselves a little bit more about what's happening to those armor panels. Okay. That's actually a very straightforward step. By all means, test this first on something you don't mind messing up. It could be the corner of a box for all it matters, you know. Just have a little try of that. Okay. All right. So that's it for the armor wear and tear that I'm doing. I will be back in a second. Alright, so 
with the armour a little bit worn, we're going to turn to Blood for the Blood God. Because what is Blood Bowl without a bit of blood? And literally, same technique. Although with Blood for the Blood God, you do want to let it have a little patch of sort of thickness. So let's see if I just go here with a few stipples. Make this bit here a bit more irregular. I just want to add a little bit to the ghoul as well on his shoulder because there was a, a little part of the ghoul that I purposefully left for this step, which is, if you can see, just here where his spine is, there is a, a little flesh part that I decided would look good. That's kind of fresh. And I'll do a little bit of spatter on him as well. So if we just around where he's more seriously wounded, if you will. I mean, his wounds look pretty serious all around to me, but Okay, fabulous. Now, just like when I um, used the rune fang steel to dot in the middle of the armor, I'm gonna take the um, the detail brush again and just heavily dot the more central locations. to where I've put this blood effect because it, it does do well to let it be a little thicker in certain areas gives it a touch more realism that's all okay all right I think that'll do us I don't want to overdo that either all right so this is how he looks now. He's weathered, he's blooded, he's highlighted, and there is only one step left. Well, technically two. I'm gonna put the transfers on him, the decals, and I'm gonna do the base. But I'll just let those uh, blood effects and whatnot dry first and be back when we're ready to go on that. Okay, so there, as you see, I've applied the decals. Now to finish him off with the base. Now all I've done is I've covered up his slaughter here with some um, masking tape. Just use a sharp knife to cut around enough where I needed the tape. And uh, yeah, basing him with quite a simple technique. First I'm going to apply a grill and earth, let that dry. Give it a wash with Agrax Earthshade, let that dry and then give it a dry brush with some Tyrant Skull and finally pop a few Middenland Tufts on it okay so I will complete that give the base of the model a paint as well just to touch that up and be back when that's done So just a brief segue while we wait for the base to dry on Varagulchua. Um, and an example of one I did earlier. So this is a mummy from the Undead Blood Bowl team. And it's painted with basically the exact same technique as this. 
And if you remember at the start of this tutorial, I mentioned that if you really wanted to cheat, uh, once you've done your pre-shade, you can just call any components basically done that you don't want to paint again. That is exactly what I did here on this mummy. So the mummy uh, bandages and the uh, bones there on the front of the chest uh, basically, they weren't touched again after the initial pre-shade, and I just went around everything else to paint it up. Here's an example of the one of the zombies from the same team. Again, less bandages, but same same uh, technique there. So you can use it to sort of cheat and really knock out a team or a unit or an army even really quickly. Also, um, a quick correction on my part, it wasn't, um, it was not the Agrell and Earth that I wanted to base Farag with, it was in fact Armageddon Dust, so, uh, and I only realised that after I'd started applying the Agrell and Earth, so I had to scrape that off and start again, but no harm, no foul, that's done now, and we're just waiting for that to dry. Alright, so there we have it. Our completed Varag Ghoul Chewer. He is ready now to join my Black Hawk team, the Broken Tooth. I was a little bit apprehensive about painting this miniature, just because of the level of detail on it. There's a lot going on, especially around where the ghoul is, on his shoulder plate. Um, and thus, I thought the pre-shade technique would be worth using on this one. And it turned out really well. I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with how this guy's turned out. Very much so. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. I hope you've managed to gain something from this. And a little bit of a shout out, if you will, to this. I thought it worth mentioning. This Hobby Dry Brush by Army Painter. Now, <clears throat> this is a... This is really a budget brush. I think this is about the three quid mark or something like that. Three British pounds. But it really does have a lovely soft tip. Um, perfect for dry brushing. And obviously you saw I used it for stippling as well. So, you know, it was it's actually a really good brush for the for the price. So yeah, I can I can recommend you get your hands on that for a for a nice budget dry brush alternative. Everything I've used in this video is available obviously from my web store, tabletoprepublic.com or check your local gaming store. So, there we are. Varagulchua from the new Blood Bowl second season starter set ready to go. Thank you very much for joining me and take care.